and spat a little bit over their monitors. As now Weber is just going to be able to take this position here at A main in case anyone was going to push through Squeaky. No quick vent dive today, though. My hopes and dreams are shattered as Impulse are going to slow this one down just in case anyone from FM is going to get overzealous and push out to try and find an early pick. But a, a fairly standard hold, or so what I can say is standard for what I've seen of Nuke anyway. As now Impulse are going to start to edge towards B ramp. Always good on a pistol round to just burst out onto B ramp as usually there will be only one man solo holding it. And he'll probably back off to heaven if you do push in. As if they do continue this current route, they will be able to easily get onto B ramp. And now, yep, Stanley is just going to back off, go up to heaven. He will communicate with his team where that push is going to be happening. And Impulse is going to burst onto the B site. Weber will get the opening game onto Jammy there. And Fry will respond as well onto Samwell. Bomb should go down from Cynic if he can find it. But the oh, Neil Zini is going to come through the door. And flawless play from FM. Great from Stanley, just using the information to communicate with his team. They were able to drop down Vent. And unfortunately, Impulse already 1-0 down. So Dan, I have a crucial question for you now. Give it to me. Do you want some side with your portion of headshots? I love them. Absolutely fantastic stuff with the USPs from FM. And now they just need to win this anti eco I mean, last week, another one of the front runners, Endpoint, really struggled on these kind of rounds. They threw away rounds that they really should have won. As Impulse are going to decide to push outside. Always interesting when the opposition does have guns. Nuki may be able to find Weber here at A main, but Weber would have heard him and we'll get the spray down with the UMP. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and now just Deagles remaining for Impulse. They're going to try and take some distance here, see if they can find any headshots. But if FM just keep out of range, or well, keep out of sight, should I say, then there shouldn't be any easy picks for Impulse. Impulse just going to bob up and down from Secret. Weber is there to combine in this almost artistic crossfire as they splatter blood all across the map. And they get themselves the picks that are so dearly required of them as they keep it clean for the most part as well. Look at their economy really beginning to flourish in the early rounds now, going into our third. And what could be a bit of an interesting one yet again for Impulse, because you look at their economy, and it's the same narrative. Welcome to the land of pistols. They're going to try and use these eagles to get themselves a couple of cheeky headshots yet again. And FM, the same sort of narrative for them as well. It's all about you know that isolation. Cut them down. Don't allow them the long range where a eagle can really set itself into motion. And instead, make some money with a UMP. Well, that's the start you need to get as Cynic shuts down Fry with his Deagle. Did he get the weapon? He did get the M4 as well. So now they've got something to work with. Smoke will come out to stop anyone pushing just yet. Stanley is going to have to back off the B ramp as well. And now I feel like Impulse just need to choose where they are going to burst out, and they just need to take a man advantage where they can. They don't want to push outside. They are a little bit concerned about that. But it is just UMPs for FM. So there are no rifles that are going to shut them down. So plenty of chance for Impulse to get into this one now. Stanley just trying to get any information he can on ramp. If they do push ramp, Stanley has got a chance of getting a spray down and getting a couple here. He has got utility as well on the defensive and actually just finds a headshot onto Samwell. I don't know how he managed to hit that shot, but that is certainly going to help FM in this round. Impulse's hopes slightly deteriorated now as they're going to move up. Perhaps think about going up heaven. Always a risky decision, especially now with the new walkway installed. You never know where players are going to be hiding. And it is just three members left for Impulse now. The problem is, is that Cynic, yes, he has this M4, and then M4 is a rifle. That's you know, surely a positive point, right? That would be you know, standard CS. But matter of fact is that he's got no Kevlar. He's got nothing to support him. Unless he can get these pistols gone through and play off that trade, then you're looking at a very brute point. And we talked about pistols. Ray one, he's gone. He's out of action. He has disconnected. Unfortunately, internet clearly not quite paying into favor this time around. As Jammy is going to be knocked down a peg, and Cynic is going to struggle to get anything done. So, hey, at least it's going to be a rifle. They're not going to save it, but they tried to go for some early damage. But now there is the mood point of, well, slowness coming in from Impulse Gaming because they have to call a pause. We have to sit tight. We have to go into a technical, and I don't think that helps them out too much. I mean, it's an okay time for a pause, I guess. You're expected to go 3-0 down after losing the pistol, I suppose. Maybe they could have tried something a little bit more risque on their terrorist side. It seemed like they were going for the kind of default, just trying to take the 1v1 angles, and it wasn't really working out for them. Perhaps they need just burst somewhere. Uh, maybe that's what they, Yeah, just uh, sheer aggression, really. If they go down to ramp, they, they saw in the opening round, Stanley just gave up ramp there. As soon as he heard noise, he was like, nah, not having any of it. I'm not going to take on four members. If they tried that again and pushed it onto B site, maybe been more aware of the vent drop down, they might have been able to do something. But as you say, the pause will come out as they are 3-0 down. But now they have a buy to work with. Now I think they are okay to slow things down a little bit. See if they can kind of get a pick here and there and perhaps they can find a way back into this game. If they don't win this round, then I'm worried.
But I think the big thing for me about this pause right is that in standard CS you'd always be saying, okay, pause just before you go into a bar round. Hey, that actually plays into your favor, but I'm hoping that my concern would be at least, and what I'm hoping doesn't happen is the frustration of a quick timeout like that. It should be something that doesn't affect you at all. It should be something as, okay, we've timed out, we only have pistols, we were probably going to lose the round anyway, so it doesn't matter, it's not important. Whether that is the case, though, only time will tell. We'll have to see how it's going to unfold, and we can kind of look back towards the situation in terms of economics. It's going to be a pretty healthy buy, right? They're going to have utility. They have two, two options. Go for a standard default, try and play to almost a bit of a strat book, or just go aggressive. Perhaps secret is an opportunity they can try and exploit. Yeah, and I wonder whether FM will start to maybe not get bored, but whether they'll start to be thinking, right, okay, we can push out, we can start looking for kills, we can start get aggressive on this CT side. Now we can start to punish them. If they're going to go for those default slow plays, perhaps we should just surprise them and get this game over with. I don't think that will be the case because I feel like FM really are using this as practice, saying we don't often play nuke. Let's use this as an opportunity to just go for those default setups, make sure that we know where we're holding, what we're going to do with different executes, different takes and stuff like that. So hopefully FM will just kind of make that decision to just stay put. If they do decide they're going to get a little bit experimentative and start pushing out on CT, then this could get a little bit ugly for Impulse because I think Impulse have now said, right, FM are more than happy to just wait for us. If then they start pushing out, that's going to surprise them, I feel. For sure, and I think kind of the interesting point is because we're only just three rounds in, we don't have you know a lot to work with. But what you can say is, if they do go aggressive, it feels like they're crisp. And these early couple of rounds, these UMPs have been doing work. We saw Stanley with Will Tramp hitting headshots that you know nine times out of ten you would expect a player not to hit. He was just peeking for information. Somehow he gets a cheeky drive by. So if they can still continue to hit this and build up that consistency, that's when worry really does start to set in. Impulse Gaming, have you woken up in the nightmare, or are you raring to go as they are back into this one? It's going to be the AWP. Into the palms of Nuki, who's ready, set, and well, raring to go. But is he going to find himself a pick? And I like this position from Weber. And well, the big thing here is a lot of teams, they don't check this. They don't. If members do drop above him, Weber will have, well, a relatively simple spray down. He might catch out Samo, who's just going to flash himself. It also oh. seems to find Cynic as well. Jammy will come in to respond, but the damage has already been done by Weber with just a UMP. And now only three members left of Impulse Gaming. Ray's going to be shut down as well. And these UMPs are just running through Impulse at, at the moment. And Nuki now needs to do some real work with this AWP. But I kind of feel like FM are going to start hunting. It's a rare time when you can just let out a clear groan of disappointment almost. Because now they're forced to hunt. They have to go aggressive. They have to try and work back what they've just lost off of basically not checking their corners and not working on those basics as Jammy is going to pick up one. They're both on top of Silo. They're trying to use elevation to their advantage. But look at how low Jammy is going to be. Nuki leading the charge. This thing, whoa, this is where things just get even worse now for them as the nade is going to go down. Jammy right on the brink of death. Just five HP now. Flash is going to go off. Nuki still toying with the idea of peeking into this one with an AWP. Two angles to peek into. Missing the shot. Going for a second reflex one. Nilzini going to take down Jammy. Gets it. Just another on towards the headshot. Nuki will fall. Left from Esports. Clean sweep, 4-0. to zero. A clean sweep with four UMPs as well. I know this is a big discussion in Counter-Strike at the moment, the strength of the UMP, but that's always going to be hard to take when you have just bought up as Impulse and you lost that round, a round that is perhaps winnable against just SMGs. I mean, what's your what's your thought process on, on UMPs? Do you think they're a bit overpowered right now? The weapon itself is, I think it's good. I think the cost of the weapon is what needs to be changed. It's too powerful in comparison to the likes of a rifle, considering the huge cost difference between a rifle and a UMP. Impulse now are going to start making their way down B ramp, it would seem. Stanley's going to take a defensive position and will get the spray down through the window as well. And Weber gets two, and that is just easy. That's cannon fodder for FM. So Impulse were like, yeah, okay, we can push down ramp. Look, we found a way onto B. Oh, we're dead. And unfortunately, the violins will start playing as Impulse just slowly running out of steam here and I already feel like they've run out of ideas and that is the one of the things of terrorist side on nuke really you, you've usually got maybe two strategies and once you've tried both of them you're like well what the hell do we do now there's always kind of these subtle things that you can change nuke hitting shots like that is the perfect way to kickstart the show but in bare bones you're, you're certainly right there are only a couple of things you can do and only a couple of parts of the map you can really try to exploit and the big thing that springs off the mind off the back of that first pick is okay how are they going to approach this because on a lot of other maps you kind of stay slow right now. You wouldn't go over aggressive. You'd try and you know, almost play with your food somewhat and not allow them to trade it right back. But just as we talk about that, guess what Pulse does? He trades it right back, gets himself a headshot on towards Nuki in return. He has fallen and perhaps the hope of Impulse is starting to dwindle yet again as they only have one minute 10 on the clock. All in all, a lot of time. 
but what are they going to do with it? As they're still just prancing around through a smoke, clearly trying to work up towards A with a bit of a split, and this could work out in their favor, especially considering FM as they've got a fair lot of manpower down towards B. But you can't forget Nilzinio just playing up in rafters with Pulse just below him. This could be absolutely brutal for Impulse if they don't check their corners. Yeah, Impulse will just take out the windows there, just so they can throw any kind of smokes or flashes into the sights. That may give a little bit of information, but FM will also be worried about the fake. And Nilzinho does need to be careful that anyone's not going to come up hell and come up behind him. But now it does look the the push is going to come through from Impulse. They do push through Shed. Oh, they push through Shed and they just get absolutely eliminated by Fry. Samuel and Ray manage to find one, thankfully. And Ray will use the Molotov just to back anyone off from heaven, but he actually misses it. And he's not able to do anything with the Molotov. But Cynic, thankfully, was there to support him. Stanley comes in to clear up Ray, and it will find Cynic as well. Great stuff from Stanley winning the round for FM. There was hope there for Impulse. They did everything right. They got the opening pick. They got onto the site. They got the kills. But unfortunately, Stanley with the rotate was just too much for them. It was also Freya with the initial pick as well through that smoke. You know, we were talking about Pulse as being the man to help the AWP, the, the man just below to be the saving grace to the man up above. But Freya just to peek through that smoke and pick off one has a lot of impact because it starts to weaken down the fords of Impulse as they're on the site. And well, now they have to try and go at it again. They've got five rifles. You know what? They have some smokes as well. So Dan, this yet again spells positivity, but what are they going to do with it? That's the question that we've asked so many times now. And at least we're seeing a bit more lurk coming to play. Nuki apparently taking the mantle on for this one to go aggressive, but he could get caught out by Weather, but the same thing could be applied either direction, and it is going to favor Impulse in this regard as Nuki. One solo headshot to start the show. Stanley over towards Ramp, though, and presented in a bit of a predicament, and Hilzinho, well, just hammering it home with that AWP. Almost a replay of last round. Nuki getting the opening frag onto Weber, who was just getting a little bit confident, but Nuki just finding himself in a position to be shut down immediately as Samuel is here in health. And actually, Cynic manages to get the spray down onto Neil Zinio. Pulse responds onto Ray, and now it's a 3v3 situation. And Impulse getting a little bit twitchy. They're not entirely sure as to where they want to be pushing just yet. They need to make a decision of where they are going to go. And it looks like Samuel is going to jump up into heaven here, using the map very positively here. As Stanley will get shut down. Cynic will get the spray down onto Frey as well. And now it's just Pulse remaining, but he does find one, so he keeps himself in this round. He's got plenty of health to work with, a little bit of utility as well does have a disarm kit, and now needs to just try and stay alive. Samuel is rotating and is just above him. It's whether Pulse will see him, and he will now drop down into vents, and the noise will be heard by Samuel. Samuel will be able to communicate that with, to his teammate. But it does look like Pulse may also be aware, and he may catch Samuel off guard, but he turns away. Can he get the kill? If he can get this, this is really important. He might be able to stay in the round, but Samuel dances around, and Jammy is able to get the angle, and Impulse finally put one on the board and perhaps this could be the momentum boost they needed. That was one of the most awkward climaxes of a round I've ever seen. Has to be said, because that little kind of tango invent was was very different, I think is the fairest way to describe it, and kind of the huge thing I want to touch on is if he found that initial pick, he would have spotted that second player, which made that clutch a very real possibility. So, you know what, making it a bit of a back and forth smattering affair where they can't quite land the shots did favor Impulse, and they got around on the board, but now, the harsh reality, don't get reset. Yep, that is true. The losing bonus won't come into effect if they do lose this one. And we've got to remember that FM are sitting pretty at the top of the table at the moment. They have yet to lose a map in the Premiership. And on the other side of Impulse, they have actually yet to get a win on the board. Yes, okay, they were able to get a draw against Fish123, but they can only hope for a draw here. And it's definitely already looking pretty dire for them. However, another couple of rounds and there will still be light at the end of the tunnel for Impulse Gaming. And Stanley, once again, is just going to take B-Ramp and hold it himself. Impulse have favoured that several times because they know they've been able to push onto it, but if Stanley does take an aggressive approach, he may be able to find several members. He's not going to back off this time. He is going to look for a battle as Samuel comes through the smoke and he will be the first person to be eliminated. And fortunately for them, Nilzinho was there to trade as well. And now this is just easy pickings for SM FM Sorry, as Nilzinho takes down the second. Weber finds Nuki lurking around outside as well. And suddenly... The hopes and dreams of Impulse are quite quickly shattered. Yeah, I think FM Esports should you know, start thinking as an organization about investing in the safety market, apparently. Some fire extinguishers, perhaps, as all they've pretty much done there is take that light at the end of the tunnel that you so dearly proclaimed and shut it down. Indeed they did. And now Impulse, they need to think again. What can they do? They only have pistols to work with. Perhaps a rush. Are they going to go for something quick? It does look like they're going to try and burst onto A site, but there are smokes there. Nilzinho and Weber are the starting force to destroy them. And now just one member left. It is Cynic, and that was just easy peasy.
I have another question for you, Dan. I enjoy these little questions, and yep. I've, I've done this before as well. Go on then. One word to describe that round. Oh god. What does it begin with? You, you, you decide. This is your time to shine. Give me something that really just sums up. I would personally go with bloodbath, but I want something a bit more adventurous. Uh, one word, I think, is... I, I don't know if I can sum up in one word, but just out of ideas. Honestly, it feels like for Impulse. They just push through Hut, and it's never going to go well when you try that. As now they're just going to run outside as well, and the, the spray down from Weber will find one, find two, finds a third with the one tap, and yeah, yet again, they're just trying something silly now. They're just saying, well, why not? Let's just try pushing outside, let's try pushing through Hut, and neither of, gonna, neither of those things are going to work, because FM are putting themselves in such good situations to stop any sort of rush. You know what? It wasn't quite one word, but it was a darn good explanation of exactly what is going on right now. Impulse Gaming, you need to start waking up. You are rapidly running out of rounds. And we talked about this at the start when we just sort of discussed the possibility of Nuke, and we said, you know, 12-3 or a competitive match. I'm starting to get worried that we might not even see a 12-3. Yeah, once again, it's just going to come down to that second pistol, really. It feels like if FM win that pistol, they win the game. On the T side, Impulse need to get rounds on the board if they are going to stay in this game. It is a CT-heavy map, or at least... It should be, but Impulse just, again, running out of ideas. Now Nuki just trying to find a pick, and he's the man that can make a difference in this game. He's done fantastically all season. He's been a little bit quiet today. He has got a couple of early picks. Might be able to find Weber once again, who's just lurking at secret at the moment. But Nuki needs to be careful not to get caught out himself, as Weber will be very aware that someone might be on top of Silo, as it is often an angle that people do take nowadays. But Nuki is just going to smoke secret and back off. And Impulse, just one minute left on the clock. Need to make a decision, decision as to where they are going to be pushing. As at the moment, everywhere they've tried has been immediately shut down by the members of FM. And Smokes will come out from FM just to delay this round even longer. They are more than happy to just sit tight, hold their angles, and say, look, it, it, the longer you, you leave this, the more likely you're just going to burst through one of these areas, and we are covering every area right now. Oh, bear in mind, also, FM have so much utility in terms of these Molotovs. They have so much stopping power, especially with Freya's position as well. He's there on a crossfire, pulls them Freya. They will combine, and ladies and gentlemen, look at how you dismantle a team on T-side Nuke as they get all the frags. Nuki is going to find one, trying to use his AWP as a bit of a shotgun. But let me give you a quick tip about Counter-Strike. Dan, an AWP isn't a shotgun. It can only do so much in a close range like that on a 1 versus 4, or God knows what else it was. It's not going to work. It's 10 to 1. Where is Faith? I wish someone in, would tell me, my teammates in matchmaking, that an AWP isn't a shotgun. When four of them buy it. You know, what they do AWP nothing with it. On T side cash is probably the best strategy ever, right? <laughs> Samo is just going to try and push outside now, see if he can find anything with his Deagle. But at the moment, they need to find anything, really. But Nilzinho has been up there in heaven doing absolute work with that AWP all game. And he's been shutting down any sort of push from Impulse. They've not been able to get down Secret at all. Their only real positive push has been towards Ramp. And Stanley just shuts down Ray as soon as I say that. And he's more than happy to back off. He'll call for support from his team, but he doesn't even need it. As Cynic will also get eliminated. Nilzinho now with the AWP is going to be challenged close. It's not a shotgun, as you said. And Nuki now will be rewarded with an AWP of his own. But four members of FM are probably not going to let him get away with this. And certainly, Pulse is there to finish the day. He's enclosed yet again in a box. There's nowhere for him to run, no wall for him to try and crawl his way up, no ladder that will save him. It's a now 11 to 1. The scoreline is getting ever so, well, almost on the brink of death. Perhaps they're even too nice to describe this ter terrorist side, should we say. Is, well, Samuel, you mentioned him. I don't want to be brutal to the guy. I'm never a fan of just, you know, claiming a player for no apparent reason. But he was struggling on the B site on that first map. Yes, it's because it was getting hit so much, and FM, they are a force to be reckoned with on their quick aggressive pushes. But now he's not picked up a single frag on Nuke, and that has to spell a bit of disaster. It's a, it's a poor guy, I'll give him that, but still issues nonetheless. I do feel sorry for him, especially on T-side. It is difficult to pick up those kills sometimes when your team is just getting absolutely slaughtered like this. And speaking of slaughter, they're about to walk into the AWP of Nilzinho, and you can see Stanley has also got the auto sniper as well. So he's just decided he's going to have some fun with this game as two members are already eliminated from Impulse. Just three left now, and they need to try and do something, but it seems wherever they go, they are greeted by an AWP or an auto sniper, even an AK of FME Sports, and they cannot get through the wall that has been set up. Samuel does respond and gets his first kill of the game onto Pulse. So now he can start to breathe. He can start to relax. He is not going to have a duck today. And now they can push on. It's a 3v4 situation. If they all do group up and try and take a site, 
They may be able to get through A main. They haven't been able to get through A main at all so far in this game. As Ray is just sneaking through Hut, see if he can find anything. Almost gets shot by his teammate there. But Fry is above him. And he will just find Jammy just pushing through smoke. He tried everything, but unfortunately the flash didn't get it. Gets the spread on to Ray now. Looks for the third. But Weber's there to clean him up. And it just seems like everything Impulse try is being dismantled. Frey has been there so many times now in terms of standing atop the hut. It's it's repetitive. It's not like we're seeing with Nilzino where he's diving around the map with his ADP being very sporadic in his approach to where he's holding. With Frey, he just kind of sits on a hut and ducks around kind of the four walls that he's enclosed upon and Impulse, they, they still can't deal with it. You know, it's almost you look at their name Impulse. Well, we want to see something impulsive. Show us something quick, like something aggressive, something off the cuff. A saving grace. It's 12 to 1. You need a round on the board because that 12 3, well, that feels far in the distance. That feels like running a marathon at this point. It's Impulse Gaming. Yes, they have five rifles. They're already pretty much out of utility. They didn't have much in the first place anyway. They will get some smokes down. But hey, you've got Nilzino still bearing down for above with an AWP. Will miss the first couple of shots, but does get an initial pick at least on towards Cynic. But not only that, all of the information. Nuki is going to at least out back down on towards Weber. Are the odds still in their favor? Well, look at Fresh's position. The question answered right in front of you. Easy pickings for Frey as he finds another one dropping into vent and it's just a jammy left on his own and he's going to need something jammy if he's going to win this round. But it, it, at the moment Stanley can just dance around and let his teammate come on the flank. But jammy will find Stanley and it's a 1v2 situation. He has got the bomb. He needs to be careful he's going to go for a plant here. He goes for the fake to see if a door opens but he looks at the wrong door. And Frey finishing things off 13 to 1. And even now if Impulse get a second on the board, I feel like this is already game over. It's mentality and it's it's insurance as well. And we, we talked about this right at the start of the show when we were discussing the premiership standpoint in itself and impulse in their previous maps. And one word that comes to mind again is kind of that stamina or that endurance. And what that point really comes down to is when they struggle on a first map, they get comes on keep it close and competitive, which in fairness, the first goal then was, you know, just that. But now this is where they kind of they've run out of life. The energy has all but gone. They're flagging, they started to walk on this marathon eventually they're going to have to stop, and well, that stopping point is going to arrive very, very soon. As Frey just almost thinking things rather demorseful at this point. It's just frags all across the board. We do see Quick 2 being found by Nuki, but I'm not sure even Nuki can save them at this point. No, unfortunately, he hasn't been able to step up as much as he had done in previous weeks. I mean, it is a difficult ask when you are playing against FM, who are one of the best, if not the best, team in the Premiership at the moment. Stanley will take his hold at B site. And at the moment, Impulse still don't know where they are going to push. There is a member in Garage, though. He needs to see if he can find him. But unfortunately, he can't. That's Weber will get that kill. And now Jammy is left on his own in a 1v3 situation. Once again, can't finish off the round in any sort of style. And that is a painful scoreline to look at if you are not just an Impulse fan, but just a Counter-Strike fan in general. Really does sum it up. And I've got a feeling this replay segment we're about to witness is going to be a whole lot of FM just doing their work, being a bit masterful in their approach. And... I think it really sums up kind of how they can play. There's so much talent. It's really chock-a-block through of raw skill and a lot of history as well. Pulse, one of the most successful players in 2016 and 2017 alike in UK CSGO. You've got that similar sort of skill on towards Nilzina. And as you mentioned, pretty much every single guy on the FM roster has it all in certain standpoints, which with an AWP, a rifle, or even pistol prowess. And that's all come out to play. Every single person has been hitting their shots. And Impulse Gaming, you know, and credit to them. The scoreline wasn't a stomp in that first map, but Nuke... We're all but done. Let's be real. We are, uh, unfortunately, and that is the way that Nuke can go. If they had got counter-terrorists to start with, then this could have been a completely different game. But we're in a situation again where all FM really need to do is win the pistol, which is definitely something they are capable of doing with the players that they've got on board. And uh, a credit to FM, they just, just, they just held their angles. I think the only player who got a little bit explorative was Weber. He would occasionally push out onto Secret. Most of the times, he was killed by Nuki from, uh, by doing so. But FM are just saying, look, no, we're just going to hold our angles. We're just going to practice where we're going to be holding. And every time they had any sort of information, they did rotate fantastically down to B site when Impulse were able to get onto ramp. But now Impulse need to have a flawless half if they are going to be able to win this one. As FM are going to start to push down to B site, Samo is going to rotate and communicate that with his team. But Cynic needs to do something here. He finds three members, finds two. Nuki will get one as well. And now it's a 5v2 situation and somehow... They were able to find two... Cynic was able to find two kills up close and personal with the USP there. Obviously, the USP is fantastic at range, but sometimes when, when you're in that situation, it can be difficult to find those headshots. 
as Weber is the last standing man for FM and he is caught out trying to sneak around and now the impulse swarm will begin. And that's the start that they needed. That's the pistol round. They can now breathe a little bit. There is perhaps life in this game. I mean, I'm clinching, clutching straws, I, I feel, but, you know, I like to be optimistic. In short, the foundations are laid, right? That's kind of what we're talking. We're looking at this building project of Impulse Game and getting themselves back into this half. And, okay, the bare bones, they've got some economy, they have an advantage, but they still have to keep it together, which, you know, if I'm going to be blunt about it, FM, I still expect to see some action with these pistols. Yes, it's the T side of Nuke, and it's a much harder job than doing it on, like, Overpass or Cash, but I'm not going to write them off. They've been so aggressive, they've been finding these headshots. They have to play perfectly on the CT side. Flawless stuff. They can't afford to leave an angle open, and at least so far, so good. Ray and Nuki are combining, and you know what? They kept it clean, so Merit has to be delivered. They do have the players that are capable of doing so, though. There are some great up-and-coming prospects on this Impulse Gaming side. And I think it's well within the, the realm of possibility that they could come back into this game. I mean, as I said, I, I think I am just being particularly optimistic. I think there's probably more tactical elements in FM's arsenal, and I think they've got a lot of pushes that are probably they're prepared to take. Yes, okay, they're probably going to lose three on the bounce here, just as they only have pistols to work with. As Nuki will find one with a grenade, tries to get the spray down with the M4, will back off, really important that he stays alive, and now he can tell that his teammate tell his teammates that everyone is out there on red and outside, and to be a little bit careful at A main. And this should be a formality for Impulse, as they do just have so much utility and so much weapons to work with, but... You never know against this FM side. If they can pick up just one pistol kill, get themselves onto a site, there is always still a chance of winning the round. I think that's certainly bleak with just Glocks. Maybe some PT-50s and some Kevlar we could have certainly seen, you know, potential round winning factor. But bare minimum for them was just much more like getting that bomb plant to help their economy in their future round as we go into all the R19th. But I want to touch on a huge point because you, you talked about having faith, having a little bit of belief. And as much as it may be a bit hard and, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are responding right now saying, why, why are we even thinking this? It's 14 to 4. You know, they're just expecting FM to shut them down on a quick fire. But my one response to that is look at Astralis. They were back against the wall against VP time and time again. Both maps in that best of three of the grand finale of the E League Major. They were out of it. They had to bring it back, but they didn't stop believing. And that's what makes things possible. That's where everything begins. That seed of, well, beginning, I think it's perhaps the apt way of putting it, all starts with one key thing belief. Belief is something that Impulse do need. You are certainly correct there. And Nuki needs to be careful. He doesn't want to get too crazy with this push, but he is actually going to find Nilzinia from behind. We'll find Pulse as well, so great stuff to start the round and exactly what they needed. I mean, I guess when you are, you have your backs against the wall, you can try stuff like that. It is going to be able to get you back into the game. If it had gone wrong, then I would have said it was a questionable play, but because it's gone right, it is keeping Impulse in it. And now it's a 3v5 situation. We saw this situation on an overpass where FM were in a 3v5 and they were able to still win the round because they pushed a site where Jammy and Samwell were holding. Now it doesn't look like Jammy and Samwell are holding the same site this time. Jammy is just on A and I think Samwell is looking somewhere else down by B. But FM now looking towards making their way into A here. And Stanley will make a little bit of noise so they're definitely going to be aware but he is on his own. He's going to be trying to sort out some sort of fake as his teammates, you can see, are just edging down ramp. But Ray is waiting in vent. We'll find Stanley dropping down. And there we go. 5v2 situation. Now the other two are going to try and push onto B site. But there should be enough members to stop this from happening. Smokes will come down. So they might be able to get a plant out of it. But that will probably be it. As Weber actually will find the kill onto Ray 1. 4v2 situation. Samwell responds with a headshot onto the, headshot onto the AWP. And now just fry left. Does find one. Can he do the impossible? Unfortunately, Nuki just pushes through as Fry finds another onto Jammy, and des this definitely is possible now. Samuel, just 44 HP, and if Fry can get the 4K here, he will get the round and well and truly shut this game down. Is Samuel just going to push through the door into something? He tries to get the spray down. Oh, just manages to catch him through the door, and that could have been disastrous for Impulse. Thankfully, Samuel, who has struggled in the last map and this map, to be honest, will pull it out clutch, but that is a lot of damage done to their economy. That's an emotional roller coaster, is what that is. God damn, my heart all over the place right now, beating left, right, and center. FM Esports nearly just taking that one home in what would have been an ace in all intents and purposes. That's a round that you don't forget, and albeit it wasn't successful, thankfully we saw Samuel shut it down in the end with that pre fire through the door, but, well. It was possibility that counts, and that has to play on the mind of Impulse now, but they have to get hyped. Samwell just clutched a huge incremental round for them. Get excited, start cheering. 
at the top of your lungs, it's like you're playing at LAN almost, and yes, it may sound almost a bit preposterous to say that you should be cheering like you're playing on a stage, but that may help them right now, bring them back from the brink of death. It's 14 to 5, they're playing for a tie. It's a build-up towards outside. Nuki holding an angle that previously they didn't check. But do FM have the experience to check it themselves? They're walking blind on out. The first one we found, the second next in line. He is going to get it on towards Stanley. Finally, a quick trade from Fry. They will put us back into a four versus three. Smokes all spread across the loins of the outside. Now Frey, a clear path on towards Secret. The only curveball is going to be Cynic. He's the man from above just lurking on the outer wings. But FM, they're pulling back. They're not rushing into this. They know they're at a disadvantage. They don't just want to walk right out into an M4. The smokes have faded. Utility now limitless. They've got 50 seconds on the clock. It's time to make a play. And FM are always dangerous in these situations when you've got players like Fry who can pull off what he did pull off in the previous round. But you're right, you've got to take the positive out of that situation. Okay, FM came close, but Samwell clutched up when he needed to. It kept them in the game, and now they can build from that. As FM are just sending players here, there, and everywhere at the moment, just trying to su suss out anything. As Weber has found his, his way into heaven, we'll actually find Jemmy just... This is masterful. That is absolutely incredible from Weber, and Jemmy can't even respond. He even heard the shots and he didn't even turn. It almost seemed like he tabbed out. And now, it's a 3v2 advantage for FM. And once again, when they're behind in one of these rounds, they just seem to find something from nothing. They searched long and hard. They whipped out their shuttle. They dug themselves a trench. Now they are looking to shut this one down right here. Cynic bouncing through a door, trying to go for what Samuel was able to achieve just moments ago, and he will fall. Samuel is going to find one, but Pulse is going to close out. FM Esports get themselves on series point 15 to 5 in this second map. Impulse, their job just got one little bit harder, and well, now you have to look towards their economy. What are they able to get up in this round? Are we seeing five rifles? Are we seeing a solid utility? There's your answer. It is going to be some famuses, but a lot of it comes down to the two UMPs as well. Yeah, this is the difference. When Impulse got that one round on Terrorist's side, FM still had a lot to work with in terms of money. However, Impulse don't have that luxury, and they've only got a couple of Famuses, one M4, and two UMPs to work with. They need a solid hold if they're going to stay in this game. But if they do win this round, money looks sparse for FM. And that is perhaps a chance for them to get back into the game, but you never know, really with these kind of situations, and they need to be careful just not to give anything away. As the flashes will come out, Nuki will push out once again, finds two onto Nilzinho and Fry. Pulse is there to respond, but they are a man down yet again. However, they found themselves in the situation last round, and it didn't go too well for Impulse. Sam was just toying with the idea of lurking through the flames. He's going to engage in a bit of a spray down, but Stanley isn't going to come out up top just yet. It is now going to be a three versus three, though, bear in mind. And with 50 seconds on the clock, FM are going to look to begin to close down some ground on towards the site as Samwell is going to get quick rotation down onto the lurks of B. And Weber, oh, on the flip side, he's up high and mighty on these rafters. He's going to look to get himself inside, though. Start to have a bit of a presence over towards A. Last time we saw that position being held, we saw some beautiful CS, some great information play, and it shut down Impulse. Question is now what we're going to see. Jammy timing is going to inflict them so much. Doesn't get to spot this push. Is it finally going to clock onto it? But it's all but too late. Cynic is going to find one playing through the door. Pulse yet again bats it on towards Cynic. The trades are favoring FM Esports. It's a two versus one. They don't know the position of Samwell. But it's just the man who was struggling to pick up a couple of frags, let alone break into double digits. And now, yet again, the pressure is all on him. He clutched down a crucial one versus one. He shut down Frey when he was playing for an ace. Now he has to do the same thing again. A one versus two, not quite an ace on the side of the terrorists, but not quite a round either. FM Esports will take it 16 to five. FM. Second map. Well, they just continue their flawless record. Yet to lose a map in the ESL Premiership. Yes, okay, they were the favorites here against Impulse Gaming, but it just seemed like a bit of a formality in the end with Nuke getting the, count the CT side first was Fantastic for FM. Impulse never really able to find their footing in the game. They ran out of ideas on the T side. There wasn't enough in their playbook and perhaps is a map that they need to practice a little bit. And practice is what it was for FM. Yes, okay, they got rid of Mirage, which we know they're more than capable of playing, but they wanted to play something a little bit different today. So they went for Overpass, they went for Nuke, and they still showed they're a dominant force. Not only that, but they kidnapped